Tippy from Kids by IJ, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining how to play the game Blurted Out. Now, depending whether you have this set or this set, they both come with the same contents. This is a game all about creativity and vocabulary. It is a one-player game all the way up to as many people as you want, and it can be two minutes to infinity up to you. So it's a really handy game to bring around and play with either your family or friends. Now, for this game, I recommend to have it maybe for kids three years old and up, just in case, you know, the dice are a choking hazard. If you do have younger kids, I recommend our Tiny Tots game, which has much, much bigger dice for their little tiny hands. Now, how do you play the game? Well, first off, Open up the set, so you can take this off. And inside, first off, you have the lovely instructions. Okay. Which is very simple, quick and easy to read, but also inside, you have 16 wooden dice, as well as a writing utensil. Ready? Now, the dice should come blank, just like these, but in this case, I've done a little prep work. Now, in order to play this game, you have to prepare the materials. So it's a little bit of a DIY activity for either your kids to do together or for you and your kid to have a bonding activity. So, how do you prepare the game? Well, because the dice start off blank, you need to fill up all six sides of the 16 dice. Now, what do you fill them up with? Well, you're going to write the alphabet on it. Now, if you do the math, 16 times 6 is a little bit more than 26. So, written in the instructions over here are how many of each letter you should write on the dice. Now, it doesn't matter which one you put it on, although I would recommend writing the same letter on different dice. So, for example, if you look at one die, it shouldn't all be covered in letter A's. Just for variety, but don't stress about it. So to help clarify, the number is the quantity of that letter that you will write. So in this case, I have one Q, one V, one W, one X, one Y, one Z. And I have two J's, two K's, three C's, three F's, and five of all of the remaining letters. That includes like A, B, D, and so on and so forth. Now, that means that if I were to look at my dice here, my completed set, I will have five M's. So I can look at it, I have one here, and probably four more inside. Now, the cool thing about this game is this does not need to be perfect. So if you lose count somewhere in between, it's totally okay, and it's your own unique set. Just try and roughly keep to the quantity shown here, because in the English language, we have like a distribution of letters similar to this. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I can't think of very many words starting with the letter X. Um, X-ray, xylophone, santipi, but that's about it. So the distribution doesn't have to be perfect, but something roughly similar. Another tip is that for all of these letters written over here, including V, W, Z, and a couple others, we suggest that you add an underline on it. Because when you roll a die, it's not always going to face the same way every time. So for example, a C, when you turn it this way, looks a lot like a U. So the underline is to help show you the orientation of the letter. It's just a little tip. Okay, that's all the prep work. So now I have a lovely set of beautiful dice covered in letters, and I'm ready to play. Now, it's a very simple game. You can read the rules for more clarification, but here's how you play. Let's say that there are two of us. We can start off easy. We can roll one die, and we both look at it. Hmm, it's an F. Now what all the players who are playing need to do is come up with a word that starts with the letter shown, in this case, F. So I could say fabulous, or fun, or family. Any word that starts with F. Now whoever said the word first 
then may keep the die, and later on, the person with the most dice wins. So the game ends once all the dice are rolled. Let's do another example. In this case, it's a T for tiger, or tippy top, or hmm, tenacious. And whoever said the word again first, then gets to keep the die, and is later on counted towards points. Now, how can I make the game a little bit more difficult? Well, you can roll two dice. So, I have two now, and I have two S's. Ooh. So what I have to do is I must start my word with one of the letters and include the other. So I could say sensations or sizzling. Ooh, I could not say sizzling because it starts with an S, yes, but it does not include the other. So in that case, sizzling would not be valid, but sensations would. So whoever says a valid word then gets to keep both dice, and it's added to their points later. Let's do another example. Ooh, L and Z. I could say lazy, or a word that starts with Z and includes L in it. See if you can think of one. I don't think I can at the moment. <laughs> but if I said lazy, I get to keep the dice, and he 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 he, I'm adding up all my points. Okay, a couple clarifications. What happens if we have two or more people who said a word at the same time? Well, you could do a couple of different things. You could give it to the person who had the longest word. You could give it to a person who said the weirdest unusual word. You could give it to the person who had said the word with the most syllables in it. See if you can come up with more rules or little tiebreakers, but those are some of my favorites. And again, at the end, the game ends once all the dice have been rolled. I hope that you enjoy the game. Thanks for watching. Bye!